Hi everyone, uh, we're going to start the last lesson of this unit today, uh, which is a mashup of counting methods and probabilities. So we're going to talk about how do we use counting methods to solve probability uh, problems. Okay, and one thing that you always want to keep in mind with probability when you think that things are getting a little bit complicated is this guy over here. Probability, whoops, sorry, is your number of favorable outcomes over your total outcomes. So if you can kind of separate the problem into two parts, how do I figure out my number of favorable outcomes and how do I figure out my total outcomes? That can really help you to solve the problem. All right, let's jump into it. Jamal, Ethan, and Alberto are competing with seven other boys to be on their school's cross-country team. All the boys have an equal chance of winning their trial race. Determine the probability that Jamal, Ethan, and Alberto will place first, second, and third in any order. Okay, so what's the probability that those three boys will place first, second, and third? Okay, well, let's think about this. Let's think about the favor, how many ways favorable could those three boys place first, second, and third? That's what's got to go in the numerator, okay? Now, if we want to think about how many ways could three boys place first, second, and third, we need three spaces, right? And for first place, we have three options, Jamal, Ethan, and Alberto. So we can place, put a three here. For second place, we only have two options because one person has already placed first. So we put a two there. And then for third place, there's only one person left. So we've just done the favorable outcomes, number of favorable outcomes. For total outcomes, we have to think, well, how many people are on this team? There's Jamal, Ethan, and Alberto, and seven other boys. So three plus seven is 10 total. Okay, so again, three spaces for first place, second place, and third place. Now, how many different ways can, how many different options do we have? I should put it that way. For first place, if there's 10 people in total, 10. Any one of them can come in first. So this first number in here is 10. How many different people could come in second? Well, now there's nine left. So this would be nine and this would be eight. Okay, so if you uh, multiply those out, uh, three times two times one is six. And then this becomes, well, let's think about this. Um, nine times eight is 72. 72 times 10 is 720. Okay, and that reduces, you can divide those both by six to one over 120. So that is the probability. All right, here's another one. Amanda is asked to choose three letters from the word men. Sorry, woman. Women. Determine the probability that the letters Amanda chooses correctly spell the word men. Okay, so she has to choose three letters and she has to correctly spell the word men. Let's think about how many ways could she favorably do so. So there's three letters. And if you think about spelling a word, order is important. So this is a permutation, not a combination. I'm going to set up spaces. Three in the numerator, three in the denominator. Okay, you may actually want to do the denominator first here. How many different ways could she arrange three letters if she's got five to choose from, from the word women? Well, she has five options for the first one, four for the second, and three for the third. Okay, now she has to correctly spell the word men. So if you think about spelling the word men, we actually only have one option for the first letter. Because if you want to spell the word men, M has to come first. So this must be an M, this must be an E, and this must be an N. So there's only one option for the first letter, one option for the second, and one option for the third. So this becomes one 
over 5 times 4 is 20, times 3 is 60. All right, let's do another one. City council consists of six men and eight women. Three representatives will be chosen randomly to form a subcommittee. What is the probability that Wade and two women are chosen to be on the subcommittee? Okay, so firstly, subcommittee, no, pro, uh, no positions. This is a combination. Okay, so Wade and two women. Well, Wade is already chosen, so we just got to choose the women. Okay, how many ways can we choose two women if there are eight women to choose from? That's going to be our numerator, right? Because that's favorable. We want Wade and two women. So that would be eight, choose two. Okay. What's the probability, what's the total rather? Well, the total is how many people do we have to form this committee? Six plus eight is 14. And how many people can go on the committee? Three. So the total number of committees that you can form is 14 choose three, okay? And this, I'm not gonna, I, I don't have a graphing calculator on my iPad, which is what I'm recording on. So I will allow you guys to put that in to yourself to check these, but this works out to be 28 over 1008 and that is 1 over 36 okay but even if you just if this was written response and you just had that down I'd be happy with that okay all right so there's a couple of uh, practice questions here I do want to go through a couple of them with you um, because they are different from the ones that we have seen. Um, so there's three that I'm gonna choose, and then I'm gonna let you guys try a bunch of these yourself, okay? So let's maybe turn to number four, which I believe is on the next page. So let's go to the next page. And this one goes like this. A bookcase contains six different math books and 12 different physics books. If a student randomly selects two books, two of these books rather, determine the probability that they are both math or both physics. Okay, so this is an or question. Okay, so it's a case problem. problem. Okay. And one thing that's also important when we're considering this problem is that the books are all different. So although there's six math and six physics, it's not six of the same math books. So maybe they're just six different textbooks from six different courses, right? And the same thing goes for physics. Okay, so they are distinct. We don't have a case of repeated objects here. Okay, all right, so let's think about this. What is the probability that if you're grabbing two books from the bookshelf, right, that you're kind of picking them up one after the other, this is dependent probability because you're not taking, you're not going to put the first one back after you take, after you, you know, after you take the first one, you're not going to put it back and then take the second one because you want to take two. So what do we actually, what would be favorable to both math or both physics? We need to figure out math and math, the probability of math and math, plus, or that means, or the probability of physics and physics. Okay, so the probability that the first one is math, well, how many are there all together? Six plus 12 is 18. So this is uh, six over 18 times, the second one is math, would only be five, but now there's only 17 left, okay? Plus the probability that both are physics, well, this would be uh, 12 over 18 times, now there's only 11 physics books left, 11, over 17, because there's only 17 left on the shelf, 
Okay, so I'm not going to go through what that all equals. You can put that into a calculator and figure out what those fractions uh, will get you. But that's how you would go about doing that question. Okay, and I think I'm going to do two more. I want to look at number six. And then I want to look at number nine. Okay. A four-digit PIN number can begin with any digit except zero, and the remaining digits have no restrictions. If repeated digits are allowed, find the probability of the PIN code beginning with a number greater than seven and ending with a three. Okay, so PIN code, order matters here because you can't put your PIN code in the wrong order or else you won't be able to get in, into the ATM, right? So the order is pin code. So this is a permutation and we need four spaces. So four spaces, one, two, three, four. And uh, if we think about that, we also need four in the bottom actually, because numerator is favorable, denominator is total. Okay. Um, let's pay attention to our restrictions. So, can begin with any digit except zero. Remaining digits have no restrictions. Repeats are allowed. Okay, maybe actually let's do the denominator first and just figure out what are the total, with these conditions, what are the total number of possible pin codes that are possible? Okay, so it can begin with any digit except zero. Okay, so the first digit could be one to nine, which is nine options. And then after that, it can be anything. So these are all zero to nine, zero to nine, zero to nine, which is 10 options, 10 options, 10 options. Okay, now let's look at the probability part where we have more restrictions, okay? All right, what's the probability that the, uh, it begins with a number greater than seven? Okay, so numbers greater than seven would be eight or nine. So there are two favorable options for the first digit, eight or nine. Those are the two that are greater than seven, okay? Ends with a three. We want it to end with a three. There's only one option. For the ending. And it doesn't say anything about the middle numbers. So the middle numbers can be anything. The middle numbers can be anything 0 to 9. So these are all 10. Okay, so when you're doing these probability problems, you essentially have to do two counting method problems. One for the numerator and one for the denominator. All right, if we multiply this all out, we end up with two times 10 times 10 is 200 over nine times 10 times 10 times 10 is 9,000. Okay, and then that reduces to two over 90. Okay. All right. And the last one that I want to do is number nine. Number nine is a fun one. All right. You got to kind of know how to play the lottery to be able to do number nine. Lotto 649 has 49 numbers you can choose from and you must pick six. If a free ticket is given out or a free ticket is given out by matching two correct numbers, Sorry, let me reread that. I thought my grammar was wrong there for a second, but it looks like it, uh, it was correct. If a free ticket is given out by matching two correct numbers, what is the probability of getting this particular prize? Okay, so firstly, a couple things about this lottery. There's 49 numbers, one to 49. You choose six in any order, and if those six are picked in any order, you win the jackpot. Okay, and then you get like smaller prizes depending on how many you get right. So if you get two out of the six right, you win the you win um, a free ticket. Okay, now 
If you think about this though, there's 49 numbers. And if we break that down into correct numbers and incorrect numbers, there are six correct, which means uh, 49 minus six is 43 numbers that are incorrect. Okay, so this 43 incorrect is usually a piece that people neglect in this problem. You need to get this prize two out of six correct. Okay, well, if you're getting two out of six correct, then how many incorrect are you getting? We have to consider that too, okay? If you're getting two correct, you must have to get four incorrect. So you have to get four out of the 43 incorrect. Okay, so this is sort of a key piece to solving this problem. Okay, now, this is in fact a combination because they pull these numbers in any order. It doesn't matter what order you choose them in or the way that they pull them. As long as they may match up, you win the prize. So you have to do both the two out of six correct and the four out of six, or the four out of 43 rather, incorrect to win the prize. So if we think about how many ways could you favorably choose two out of six correct, that would be six choose two. And how many ways could you fa uh, choose four out of 43 incorrect? That would be 43 uh, choose four. Now this and means we need to multiply. Okay, now the total is how many different lottery tickets are there that exist in this type of competition? Well, there's 49 numbers in total and we gotta choose six of them. So the denominator is going to be 49 choose six. Okay, now when you multiply this all out, again, you guys can plug these into your calculator, you end up with 15 times 43 choose four is uh, 123,410. Trust me, I don't know these off, off the top of my head. I did this before. Over 13 million 983,816. That's the total number of different lottery tickets that exist in the 649 lotto, by the way. And when you convert that to a decimal, it works out to 0 0.13. So you have about a 13% chance of getting a free ticket every time you play this lottery. Okay, so I'm going to leave it uh, there for today. And I will see you guys.